Now, Jimmy, what did I tell you about eating too many sweets? Do you want to grow up to have nasty? Oh, it's a front tooth. Oh, it's loose anyway. Can I get six months like other boys do? Yes, dear. But remember, only for your baby teeth. Hello, Mother. Here it is. Off you go now, or you'll be late for choir practice. You know, Sue, I often wonder if you youngsters realize how lucky you are nowadays. In my day, it was usually the mother who was held responsible if children ended up with bad teeth, flat feet, curved spines, heaven knows what else. Except for an overworked doctor, there was no one else to advise her. And you only went to him to get something good. Preventive services as we know them were only just starting then. I'm not suggesting we weren't properly cared for. Just the same, had I known then what I know now, life could have been a lot simpler and better. When I was your age, I thought I had all a girl could want. Good looks, good health, all the things you have, Sue. And what was very important to a girl, there was a boy who thought just the same. We lived in what was the outskirts of town then, and this boy and I went to the same school. We went on horseback, and it was real fun. I suppose I enjoyed being with boys as much as girls do now. I remember his name was Bill. And when he wasn't riding or swimming or at school, he was reading up on physical culture and the care of the body. You know, teeth and muscles and things. In time, he became a real crank about it, especially teeth. I should have been warned, but all I did was pull his leg about it. In those days, the nearest picture theater was right in town, and so we used to put on our own shows. We were amateurs, of course, but we did our best, and we enjoyed ourselves. Well, at first I did. Then things began to go wrong. Our stage director began to find excuses for giving me smaller and smaller speaking parts. Worst of all, Bill began to act differently towards me. It took me a long time to find out why these things were happening to me. And a lot of money had to be spent in the process. And by the time I'd been made to realize how important my appearance was, I was in my twenties. And Bill and two or three others had gone the way of all good-looking men. You start getting worried a bit at that stage. I've had false teeth since I was 23. And don't let anyone tell you they're as good as the real thing. Might as well say a wig's as good as real hair. Or a wooden leg's as good as flesh and blood. I know I'm not exactly plain. But even so, I could have saved myself a lot of trouble and heartache if I'd realized that good teeth are part and parcel of good looks. be having a lot of trouble with your voice today. I have some teeth, sir. Well, young man, you're lucky it's one of your first teeth and not one of your second. Teeth are needed to sing properly just as much as to speak properly. Now look, I'll show you. The teeth, as well as the lips and the tongue, 
are used to create certain sounds. For instance, thy, feet, praises, evermore his praises, say after me, Miller, evermore his praises sing. Evermore his praises sing. <laughs> Mrs. Jordan wanted to know if I'd let you go out with her and Johnny for a short drive, an early picture, and perhaps a bite of food. I said yes. You do want to go. Oh, yes, Mother. Thanks. They'll be here any moment. There are few dark clouds on the horizon of the young. They face life fully equipped with everything new and fresh. Like shiny new cars, they're ready to race along the high roads of life. But just as a car needs attention if it's to stay the course, so the human body needs care and forethought if it's to perform its functions unhampered. In the same way that a car can be immobilized by engine trouble, so can man be slowed down by physical handicaps such as bad teeth. Hollywood producers have made millions by just glamorizing the human form. Yet the most glamorous star is but an expensive replica of every boy and girl in the land. And how do the young grandmothers of the screen stay young? There is no elixir of youth. There is only one word, care. Their figures, their hair, and especially their teeth, are their stock in trade. And they care for them. There's no reason in the world why this should not apply to all of us. Okay, what's she got that I haven't? For one thing, she doesn't park her teeth in the water glass at We were given a wonderfully efficient body, with every part of it having a special task to perform. What we do with it largely determines what kind of a life we shall enjoy. In the case of our teeth, these were designed to last our lifetime and to cope with our greatly varied diet. False teeth are not an efficient substitute. They may be the next best thing, but they're only the last refuge of those who did not care for the benefits they were given by nature. As Mother so aptly said, you might as well consider a wig or a wooden leg as good as the real thing. 